Hello everyone. Today we were going to talk about instantaneous rate of change and S average rate of change. So first of all, what is rate of change? Um, you may learn that before. So if in linear function, which is y equals to mx plus b, m, which is the slope, the slope of the function is the rate of change. So when we define m would be what? The changing in y over the changing in x. Delta means changing. That means you use the first point's y coordinate, subtract the second point's y coordinate, divided by the first point's x coordinate, subtract the second point's x coordinate. So that's the rate of change. So what is average rate of change? Oops. Well, when you think about it, <coughs> slope only applies to linear function. That means when the graph is a straight line. But when it comes to average rate of change, when it comes to math, <coughs> lots of times our graph is a curving graph like this. In that case, we can find the slope of this whole graph. However, we can find the rate of change in between this point by connecting a line in these two points and trying to find the slope of this point. That gives you the average rate of change from point A to point B. So this is similar to when you're driving a road trip. When you're having a road trip, if you're driving from Washington to California, um, let's say, no, let's say you're driving from Seattle to um, Portland, you're driving on I-5, sometimes you get off the highway. So it takes you um, five hours to complete the trip and uh, totally was, how long is it? Let me look up. So let's look this up um, from Seattle. To Portland so totally is 174 miles and then the time is two hour and the estimate time is it takes two hour and 51 minute um, let's round it up to totally is 180 miles and three hours so that means it takes what three hours drive from Seattle to Portland. All right, and the total distance is what? 180 miles. So what would be your average speed? So your average speed probably would be what? The speed during your whole trip would be the distance divided by the time. So that means you're driving 16 miles per hour on average. That's average, but you know that. You have a driving experience or when you're never riding in a car, you know that sometimes it's driving faster than 16 miles per hour. Sometimes it's slowing down. Your speed is more like, think about if you're passing a town on the highway, sometimes that you're crossing the town and then they have a speed limit like 25 miles an hour. But when you're driving on the highway, you're probably driving 17 miles per hour. So that means the speed is changed. We, so that speed now we're talking about is the average rate of change. That means on average, your speed driving from Seattle to Portland is 16 miles per hour. Okay, so today we will have a new concept about instantaneous rate of change so that means on the curving line on the curving on the curving graph we have a graph like that 
at any given point, I want to know, hey, what is the slope at this point? What's the change in the instantaneous rate of change at this point? Well, if it's two point, we know that, hey, we will draw a line in between these two points and find the slope of this connecting line. So this line is called second line. Okay? Second line. So how do I find instant instantaneous rate of change at this given point? Point A. Our point A, let's say this is our point A. So to find that, we need to have a tangent line. Tangent line is the line that you just touch the point along with the graph. So by definition, second line is the line between two points on the curve whereas tangent line by definition is the line at one point on a curve so like like the graph I have here the red one is the tangent line and the, the y one is the second line so the second line determine the average rate of change the, the slope of the second line I should say I should say that The slope of the second line is the average rate of change. ARC means average rate of change between point A and the point B. Whereas the slope of the tangent line remember tangent line is at one point right let's say the tangent line at point a is the instantaneous instantaneous i would say inc instantaneous rate of change at point a so here is the differences all right, so now let me show you a graph. What does that look like? So when you take a look at this graph, this gives you a tangent, a second line, right? Because they're connecting between two points. The black curve is the function, which is negative x to the cube plus x squared plus 12x minus 3. So if... I changed the point a little bit. Oops. So such as I change it, I change the point as of zero. The second line is going to change, and then they calculate in between these two points. They will calculate the slope for you of this line. Now, here is the tangent line. The tangent line is the blue one, and the, with that they calculate the slope for you so as we change gradually you can see it will change along with that too okay so here is the question can we use a tangent line to predict a oh, I'm sorry can we use a second line to predict a tangent light well, the answer is yes, because if you look at this graph,
in here. At this point, this is point A, I want to find the tangent line of point A. So if I have a point B, I want to draw a second line between point A and point B. So that is the notation second line AB. It's going to look like this one, right? Let me do a try to draw a better one. Okay. And then that's not the tangent line of point A. So now let me use another one. Give you another second line of AC. If C get closer to A, let's see what happens. Well, you will get a line like this one. Oh, <laughs> the graph is not very nice. Let me try to find an online software to do that. Probably using the graph is better. So here is the program that I found online. So as you can see, the black dot is something that, let's say, the black dot at 1 is where we want to find the tangent line, when x equals 1. We want to find the tangent line. So now the red one is a dot on the graph, right? So when the black dot and the red dot, they connect together, they have a line. This line is called what? A second line. Because second line is a line that between two points on the curve. So in order to find our tangent line, what do we need to do? So one way to do it is we try to make the red dot very, very close to the black one, as close as possible, then we can find our tangent line, right? If you're getting very close, even if it's over there, that means you only have one point on the graph. So that's the idea of finding a tangent line by using a second line. We're trying to find a point close enough that they are very close to each other. Then these two tiny little points connecting together, the second line they're connecting together because they're so close, we can view it as the tangent line of our destiny point. Okay. So here are some examples about how to find a average rate of change and instant rate of change in a function. Let's use the function that we just showed earlier. In here, we have a function. Oops. Where function fx equals to s to the four minus s to the s cube minus two x squared. So here is the point. So let me write this down. So I have a function fx equals to s to the fourth minus s cubed minus 2x squared. All right. Now I want you to find the average rate of change from x equals to 1 to x equals to 0. So how do we do that? So remember, the black dot is where we want to find. So let's say if the red dot goes to 0 and the red dot at x equals to 1, what happens? They will have a second line. This is a second line. If we can find a slope of this second line, then will be done, right? That would be the average rate of change from x equal to 1 to x equal to 0. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, average rate of change is the slope, right? The slope is equal to the change of y over the change of x. So change of y is y1 minus y2. Change of x is s1 minus x2. Now we have x1 and s2. Let's say the first 
is S1, the second one is S2. So that means we still need to find Y1 and Y2. So we have the function. So our Y1 is equal to when X equals to 1, we substitute into the function. So I have Y1 equal to F of 1. So that means our Y1 is equal to the Y coordinate would be 1 to the 4th minus 1 to the 3rd minus 2 times 1 to the square. So this is equal to negative 2. And then the next is we still need to find y2. The coordinate of y2 is equal to x equals to 0, right? So we substitute x equals to 0 into the function. I will have 0 to the fourth minus 0 cubed minus 2 to 0 to squares, which gives you a 0. Okay, so that means we have two coordinate paired, all the paired. One is when when x equals to 1, y equals to negative 2, and the other order pair is when x equals to 0, y also equals to 0. So what would the slope? So the slope would be y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. y1 is equal to negative 2, y2 equals to 0, s1 equals to 1, s2 equals to 0. So the slope of that second line between x equals to 1 to x equals to 0 is equal to negative 2. Which makes sense if you look at the graph, it's going down, right? So that means it has to be a negative. So what about I want to find a instantaneous rate of change at x equals to 1? Well, remember, when you look at the graph, if I want to find the instantaneous rate of change at the black dot, what I want is I want the red dot gets very, very, very close to the black dot. As close as possible, then we will find the instant rate of change at the black dot. So how close are we consider close? Well, it depends on, it's case by case. If a range like that small, like this is between negative 2 to 2, I would say, hey, the next stop, if it's close enough, should be when x equals to 1.0001. Or something like x equals to 1.0004. This is a very small number. That means 1 and 1.004, they are very close. Or you can pick a point like... Um, the red dot is 0 0.09999 that gives you very close to x equals 1 because their distance is going to be 0 0.0001 so as long as you find a number small enough that will work so can we do something like hey i think x equals 2 is small number in this case it's not because as you can see our range is from negative 2 to 2 so that means if you pick x equals to 2 as your next close number to x equals to 1, that won't work because they're too big in our case. So now if I pick the pawn x equals to 1.001, .001, so now we have two points. So we just need to find the average rate of change from s equals to 1 to s equals to 1.001 because they're close enough that the slope of the second line between 1 to 1.001 we can consider that's the tangent line of x equals to 1 all right so how do we do that so well the first step is you still need to find the y coordinate in the previous step, we already found that when x equals to 1, y is equal to, I'm going to write it here, a 
is equal to negative 2, sorry. Okay, so what about f of 1.001? So we need to substitute 1.001 into the function. So I have 1.001 to the fourth power minus 1.001. 1 to the third power minus 2 times 1.001 to the second power and use Google Calculator to calculate that for you. So this is equal to negative 2.0002999. So during your calculation you want to keep it as detailed as possible. Okay. So now we also find the pair order of the second point, which is when x equals to 1.001, y equals to negative 2.0002999. Okay, so now let's find the average rate of change in between these two points. So the slope is equals to negative 2.00999 minus negative 2 over 1.0001 minus 1. So this is equals to so this is equals to negative 0.000999 over 0 0.001. So the slope is going to be negative. 2 point this is 2 sorry um 2.999 and the rest of it so that would be the instant rate of change at the point x equals to 1 So there are other examples, such as i given you a function. So let me use the my pen. x, y equals square root of x, and I want you to find the slope, the average rate of change find the average rate of change at, I should say between, x equals to 1 to x equals to 9. So we know that this is a square root of function, so the function is like this one. So when x equals to 1, probably at here, and x equals to 9, probably in here, right? And then there's a tangent line between these two points. No, a second line, sorry. If it's between two points, it should be a second line. So we're trying to find the slope for this second line. All right, so how do we do that? Again, after you have x and y, we need, you, after you have x, we need to find y by substitute s into the function. So f1 is equal to square root of 1, which is equal to 1. And then f of 9 is equal to square root of 9, which is equal to 3. So that means the slope is equal to the changing in y over the changing in x. So the changing in y would be f of 9 minus f of 1 over 9 minus 1. So f of 9 is equal to 3 f of 1 is equals to 1, 9 minus 1 is equals to 8. So that means the rate of change is equals to 1 fourth. So that means the slope between this second line is 1 fourth. Okay, so what if I ask you, hey, try to find 
the instantaneous rate of change at x equals to 9. So that means we need to find a second line where the point is very, very close to 9. I'm going to use a yellow one. So something like this, they're close enough, and when they're connecting together, this we can consider is the tangent line of x equals to 9. Okay, so that means we need to find the point. So we can find we need the yellow point, right, which is close enough to x equals to 9. We need to find we need the point maybe 9.001 or something like it doesn't have to be 0 0.001. You just need to have a number small enough that it's very, very close to 9. Oh, x equals to 8.997, that also work, or x equals to 9.004, that's also fine. So whatever you choose, that's okay. As long as the number is small enough, the distance between these two points is close to 9, that will be fine. So now I'm going to choose x equals to 9.0. 0, 1, because it seems easier to calculate. So in that case, I know that f of 9 is equal to square root of 9, which is equal to 3. So the first other pair is 9, 3. And the second one is f of 9.001 is equal to square root of 9.001, which is equal to let me use the calculator. So this is equal to 3.0016662604. Okay, it's very long. So that means I have a point 9.001 and the second point would be 3.0016624. Now let's find the slope between these two points. So I have m is equal to 9 minus 9.001 over, oh, sorry, to be changing in y over the changing in x. So it should be 3 minus 3.0016662604 over the changing in x, 9 subtract 1001. Okay, so this is going to equals to one point six 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 six. So that would be the instantaneous rate of change at the point x equals to nine. Okay, so that's it for today. Let me know if you have other questions.